Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a very nice young man who begins replacing Arthur Godfrey once again tomorrow morning. But tonight, we're fortunate enough to have him, Peter Lynde Hayes. Thank you very much, and thank you, Arlene, and happy Mother's Day. Thank you. I hope Peter sent you a potted plant. Peter Gable, that is. <laughs> he threw me a potted plant. <laughs> Speaking of mothers, we have another lady on this panel. I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with this lovely lady. Uh, her endeavors uh, are tremendous. She writes a column called The Voice of Broadway, and she has a morning radio show called Dorothy and Dick. She gets top billing in her family. And uh, also, she has the pleasure of raising two wonderful boys and a lovely lady her daughter, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. We have a treat for our viewers tonight and also for our panel. It's a guest panelist who has never appeared in that capacity before. He has, however, seen a great many panel shows played because he is the moderator of the British What's My Line. He is the very Irish, Mr. Eamon Andrews. Well, it will soon become very obvious that uh, I haven't played on the panel before, and uh, <laughs> I'm very honored to be in Bennett Surf's seat, but I now let's go and introduce the man with, I believe, the most polished seat in the business, John Daly. <laughs> Raymond, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, panel, I have a good, happy surprise for you. You don't have to put on your blindfold. <coughs> but we are up to our usual tricks. We've got some nice folks with interesting occupations who are going to try to give the panel a rough time of it. We'll also have our mystery celebrity before the panel a bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just 30 seconds. All right, now, panel, let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Julia. Julia Hamblet, is that right? <laughs> Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Hamblet, would you tell us where you're from? Winchester, Massachusetts. Winchester, Massachusetts. Well, it's nice to have a New Englander with us. And I don't like on this warm night to ask you to unnecessarily exercise, but I think the panel would appreciate it if they had a chance to get a closer look at it. How are you, Miss Hamlet? Hello, Mr. Hamlet. Hello, Miss Hamlet. All right, Miss Hamlet, if you come over here and join me now, I would ask you next if you're familiar with our scoring system. Yes, I am. All right, fine. Then let's let the folks at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. the one bit of help you're going to get. Miss Hamblett is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Miss Hamblett, uh, does your work accustom you to meeting people or being seen by people? Yes. Both men and women? Yes. Have you rather a public job? Yes. Do you by any chance work for a, a non-profit making organization? Yes. Do you do anything in government? Yes. Uh, is it uh, something other than the federal government? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Andrews. Well, now I know it's federal government, and I'm no wiser, but we'll try and work out what that one is. 
I thought you might have something to do with Winchester's because that's all I know about, but you obviously haven't. You, you're in full command of your, yourself, so you meet people. Do people come and see you in your work? Yes. Do you provide these people with some sort of service? I would say that it's fair to assume that uh, in many of the instances when people come to see Miss Hamlet, that they are provided with a service in a manner of speaking, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Do you uh, work normal office hours in providing this thing that might be some sort of a service? Yes. Uh -huh. When people come to see you and they go away, do they have something with them that they didn't have before they came to see you? Wait a minute, I have to have a gut for it. Actually, I think uh, Miss Hamlet is right. You might want to quibble with me about this later, Eamon, but uh, I think properly you should have a no there. Nothing is taken away that is tangible or beyond the area, you know, of a service which can be other than a tangible object conveyed from one person to another. This is my first time on American television practically makes a serial story out of a no. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot out of eight to go, Miss Preston. Miss Hamlet, would people ever be liable to come to you or see you if they had been in trouble? Yes. Uh, do you pass any kind of judgment or advise them in any way because of the trouble that they may have been in? Yes. Uh, would you uh, be a member of the bar? No. That's three dollars. I mean three. the proper kind. That, please, Miss Hamlet. <laughs> well, no explanation is necessary, please. <laughs> That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Hayes. Uh, people come to you when they are in trouble and you help them. Is that right? Am I right in assuming that? It, it's uh, been elicited that in some people come with troubles and when they come with troubles, they are given advice, yes. Anyone for Scrabble? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious about... Uh, Mr. Andrews established the fact that uh, people never take anything away from your office. Do you take something away from the people that come to visit you? <laughs> Money. Now, I would think uh, where there might be an isolated instance where this could happen, it is not necessarily germane to a determination of what line Miss Hamblet has. All so right, all right. <laughs> Four thousand six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Miss Hamblet, do you wear something uh, other than the type of attire that you're wearing now in your? Other well, than this? Well, yes. of course, yes. I uh, I realize you wouldn't be wearing anything quite that evening, but do you wear anything that would identify your job if we saw you wearing it? Yes. Uh, do you ever work in a courtroom? No. That's five down and five <clears throat> to go, Mr. Andrews. Well, now, I'm wondering with this charming manner of yours, if you have anything at all to do with children? No. <laughs> <laughs> Six down and four to go, Miss Spencer. Would, would it be considered what you wear in any way a uniform? Yes. Uh, would it be a, any kind of a police uniform? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Hayes. Would it by any chance be an army uh, uniform? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would it be any branch of the armed forces? Yes. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. Well then, um, Massachusetts, was it? It was, it was Winchester, Navy. Massachusetts, yeah. Navy, perhaps? No. Well, that makes it nine down and one What's to go, Mr. Andrews. Must be only what, we didn't get in the air yet, did we? No, the Air Force? No. Air Force? No. Ten oh. down, no more to go. <laughs> Coast Guard. Coast Guard, did you Marine. say Coast Guard, Coast Peter? Marine. That's wrong. Marine. Not Marine. <laughs> yes. I beg what, dear? It oh, is Marine. It is Marine, yes. I want you to meet the Commandant of the Women's Marine Corps, Colonel Julia Hamlet. Yes. as an old, the oldest retired reserve lieutenant junior grade in the United States Navy, I'm happy to announce that all that Colonel Hamlet won is going to the Navy Relief Fund tonight. Ah, nice. Yes, Miss Dorothy. Doesn't the Colonel ever take away a three-day pass? No, the no. Colonel never does. Now, that's in the lower echelon. Oh. The lower echelon. I would say one thing, if I may, and I think the Colonel uh, would be interested in it. This is Armed Services Week, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's kind of a week in which we can... Uh, pay our respects to a lot of young people who uh, give a great deal of service for 
a very critical period of their lives and do it well and learn a good deal. And I think that their offices, including you, ma'am, <laughs> reserve a great deal of credit. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Nice to have you. Happy panel, very happy. Let's see what you can do with our second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Gloria? Alessio, is that right? <laughs> Miss Alessio? Very fine hand, if I may say so. Where are you from? From Berwyn, Illinois. Berwyn, Illinois. Well, it was nice to have you with us. Tell you what, just to change things a bit, you look at the panel. Panel, you look at Miss Alessio. Now you come with me, Miss Alessio, please. <laughs> and you sit right down here. And do you know how we score things? Yes, I do. All right, fine. Then let's let the folks here and those at home know exactly what your line is. Miss Alessio is self-employed, and we'll begin the general questioning with Peter Lynde Hayes. Miss Alessio is self-employed? Yes. I don't blame her. <laughs> do you, uh, Miss Alessio, do you deal in services? Yes, I do. Well, in deference to our British uh, dignitary here this evening, would a gentleman like myself uh, avail himself of your services? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. You do think so? I think you would. Uh, would your services by any chance make me happy? Very, very. I would be remiss if I did not say that emotions could be varied in this area. I gathered as much I did. But I gathered also that it might make me unhappy. Huh? Could your services uh, lead to having me put in jail? Would it be that extreme? Why, Mr. Hayes, no. No, no jail. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is there anything physical about your services? Yes. You, you come into bodily contact with the people you deal with? Yes. Uh, might you be termed athletic? <laughs> no? Well, <laughs> I think that actually, uh, do you play tennis, things like that? Oh, I do, yes, but not in my... <clears throat> I think what Miss Kilgallen meant there was do you have to run after you give your service? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a no to that, Dorothy. It's not, not athletic. It's not uh, in, in involved words, her, in the service. Her strength or, or uh, dexterity. And then we just leave it. Athletics are not right. involved. Yes, that's two down and eight to go, Mr. Andrews. All right, well, uh, Mr. Hayes said that he could have your service and might be happy or unhappy. You thought happy and John thought perhaps a little unhappy or could be. Could Miss Kilgallen also have the service from you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And would the, would the same uh, thing apply as to whether she was happy or unhappy, just make no difference because she was a lady and not a gentleman? Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, this service that you give, would it take more than half an hour to give it? It could. It could. And would, would Miss Kilgallen be the wiser for it? Would she know something she didn't know before after she'd left you? <laughs> I think here again, um, you might disagree subsequently, but uh, the issue of knowledge retained or learned is not necessarily germane to the service that is supplied. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Would you be likely to touch the person any place around the head and shoulders? Yes. Uh, would you have on something uh, that might be considered a coverall or a uniform of some kind when you are giving your services? Yes. Um, does it have anything? You say that strength has nothing to do with it. Is that what was decided? No, no, no. Oh. The question asked was say. athletics. Oh, I see. see. And we just said well, no is there anything relating to massage in your work? I'm speaking in your behalf, Peter. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Here now, stop there. Uh, the swearing is constant. Are there any two ways about massage? <laughs> no, 
know, but I mean, how could, look at the discussion. John, are you having a massage? <laughs> a message, a message, a message. A message. Uh, no, I don't think we can go with them, Miss Sarge. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Hayes. Well, it was so long ago that I've forgotten Arlene's question. <laughs> <laughs> was it has a... nothing to do with massage. That's right. Does it have something to do with the physical betterment of the patient or the person that comes to you? Yes. Uh, would the administration be ab above the shoulders? Yes, it would. Goes around dyeing old actors' hair. And <laughs> <laughs> That's not a no. Uh, would it have anything to do with dental work? Yes, it, it could. Well, now see here, I've got the cavity <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'm getting very close now. Uh, uh, are you a dentist? Yes. <laughs> May I take an extra vow? I've been on this program six times, and that's the first line I've ever guessed. Ah! Oh. <laughs> first one. And I'm, I'm sure Mr. Lestio is happy about it as I am, Peter. <laughs> Matter of fact, to celebrate, we'll throw the rest of the cards over. Good. How's that? Good deal? Fine. Mr. Lestio, thanks very much. It was a very interesting occupation. In just a moment, we meet tonight's mystery come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. The blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Very much. Good. So. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Miss Arlene Francis. Well, that was a lovely reception for whoever it is. Uh, do you often have receptions like that when you appear in person? Uh, quelques fois, oui. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Too. What's that? Sometimes, quelques fois. Quelques fois? Yeah. Merci. Who opened the French windows? <laughs> Peter Lind, you're up. Am I up? Well, I, I judge from the squeals of the uh, gay young ladies sitting in our audience that this must be a handsome gentleman and uh, probably in the entertainment field. Are you uh, in the entertainment field? Uh, oui, monsieur, quelques fois. Uh, uh, Pas tout le temps. Hmm? Pas tout le temps, je dis. Do you have anything to do with music? Mm. Pas trop, no, no, not too much. Mr. Andrews? Uh, instantly recognizable. I take it that you have appeared before through the medium of television. Uh, that is correct, sir. Miss Francis. <laughs> oh, it cannot be Maurice Chevalier. Impossible. <laughs> he would speak with an English accent to fool us. <laughs> Are you other than the Frenchman you seem? Mm, I have to answer this question in the affirmative. Uh, yes. Mr. <laughs> Uh, well, in spite of the French accent, I detect a note of the English underneath the, the French accent, and probably out of deference to our vis visiting dignitary from England, I think that we probably have a, an English uh, motion picture star in our midst. Is that, is that right? This gentleman is quite smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that's a fair assumption. Miss Kilgallen. Ooh, are you also at the theater? I beg your pardon? Are you also in the theater, living, legitimate type? Uh, no, I would not say that. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Andrews. Are you, in fact, British or Irish? I'm British, monsieur. Miss Francis. Yes. I know who you But you have British. appeared in American motion pictures, as well as English? From time to time. From time to time. Not too often. You can be English now. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's my boy. <laughs> All righty, Mr. Hayes. I think I know who it is. Shall I pass? No, no go ahead. <laughs> well, you ought to have a big night. You get two tonight, maybe. Yes. Well, go it'll ahead. be the first time, and I know that uh, Jimmy Durante is opening at the... Oh, don't be a cad. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Peter Lawford. Is who it is. <laughs> Where do you get a, a rush 
time. Best French accent we've had in a long time, I must say. <laughs> well, I tried. I think I did a little better the last time. Golly, Day, you sure look healthy, man. What you been doing? A little of that sun. I saw your brother-in-law, Senator Jack, in Washington. Oh, did you? Night, and happily, I might say a lot of people say this happily. He's just looking as healthy as you are. Oh, he's in terrific shape now. Yeah, he's good, good fellow. Well, Aren't you nice. more crew than last time? I beg your pardon. Aren't you more crew than last time? I, I chopped a little off. Yeah. He washed his hair in soft water. I thought maybe the Marine Colonel had inspired <laughs> <laughs> Well, Peter, I must say it was nice to have you back with us because we had your, the pleasure of your company before. Uh, would you like to say goodnight to the panel and uh, give Mr. Hayes a medal as you go by? Well, I you will. got two tonight. Uh, <laughs> <Thank Interesting. you. laughs> time, I think, to test your skill once again. Let's uh, call in our next challenger and ask uh, them to sign in. <laughs> Would you sign in right there, please? <laughs> Charles D. Giovanni, is that right? That's right. <laughs> and Ed Carr, is that right? <laughs> nice to see you both. <laughs> Now, there's the camera out there. See, just look, watch the birdie. Uh -huh. Now watch the panel for a minute. Handsome panel, don't you think? Good, now come with me. Very That's good. fine. Let's go over here and sit down. <coughs> and panel, as you see, we have a dual operation here for you. I would ask our guests if they're familiar with our scoring system. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You are? Then let's let the folks at home and our friends in the theater know exactly what your line is. Three minutes to tackle this. I will tell you that our guests are salaried, and we'll begin with Mr. Andrews. Salaried? You have somebody planted in the audience, John, who says I every time, and I don't know what it means. <laughs> uh, salaried. Did you require training for this job? No. Not in our terms of specific training. It's a good beginning. Time. Goodbye. One down, <laughs> nine to go, Miss Francis. Is there any product involved in what you do? No. No, I think not again in our terms. There's a product, as is often true, but basically they deliver a service. So that's two down and date to go, Mr. Hayes. Well, they're so young. Are they juvenile delinquents? <laughs> <laughs> now, the very um, opposite, I would say. You going to let that stand as a formal question? I don't well, I was just it. joking, naturally, but you you've given me a rather broad hint. Why? Well, you said uh, the very opposite of juvenile delinquents. Are you engaged uh, even remotely in some sort of a charitable operation? A no. charitable operation? <laughs> Not the way I read the book the last time. At three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you do make a profit at whatever you do. Well, they, they're salaried, and those whom they serve, we do fondly hope make a profit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's something that's deliberately profit-making, is that you're not making a funny. Oh, no. These people no. are trying to make money. I would say there's a decent effort made to come out ahead. <laughs> uh, is, is what you do uh, amusing to other people? No. Yes. Well, I would say... <laughs> I would say, that I think that, um, with the permission of Ed, I think we, I will agree that it, on occasion it could be amusing, using the term very, very broadly, darling. Then is it useful to other people? Yes. Could I avail myself of your services? <laughs> no. 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 Four six to go. We have only time for about one or two questions. Have you got any idea? Well, I, I hadn't, and it didn't require training, but the public must see them if it sometimes is amusing. Do you appear in front of the public? Uh, yes, I would say. Are you some form of entertainers? No. Uh, no. No, I don't think we'd call them entertainers. Horses. Do you have anything to do with animals? No. <laughs> with no. animals? No. Actually, we've run out of time, so I'll flip all the cards by forfeit. I think you were getting into the area where both Ed and uh, Charlie would have had a little rougher time of it, because I want you to meet Probably the Bat Boys of the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And a couple of really fine young men. You must admit this is just about the opposite of the juvenile delinquent, right, Peter? I've seen some amusing bat boys, though. <laughs> well, we gave, we gave a qualified yes on that. Before our panel says good night, may I remind you to tune in again 
next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And now a word from next week's... Instructed by my colleagues to note that Eamon Andrews is now a double threat man. He's certainly <laughs> a good panel moderator, and he's proved tonight to be a skillful and engaging panelist, too. Here, here. <laughs> Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Harley. Good night, John. I will be uh, replaced next week when I'm in California by a Californian, Miss Hedda Hopper. Goodbye. I think I guessed her wrong last week or a couple of weeks ago. Yes, I, I'm glad I'm not going to be here next week. <laughs> but the man with the most famous horn rim glasses in show business, and on a clear day he can see the lens, Robert Q. Lewis, will be sitting in this hot seat. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Peter. And I'm going to be replaced next Sunday night by me. Uh, awfully nice <laughs> to have you, Eamon. Please come again. Good night. Good night. And sitting here will be the famous film actor Ronald Reagan. And now that I know baseball is not entertainment, good night, John. Good night. Good night, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life? Travel races from North Carolina are made to American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 class ships.